What's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Jason Thrifts. And joining me, well, supposed to be joining me in the co-host chair is Primo Chemo. However, I don't know what I've got myself into now. <laughs> it's me. Oh, shoot. You yeah, had me fooled. How are you, brother? I'm doing great. How are you? Hey, you know, I'm, I'm good. I, I've been wanting to uh, have you co-host and do some things with you for a while, so... Uh, and then we got away from me, Debbie, who, who's my producer and sometimes co-host. Uh, yesterday, she goes, who's your co-host? I go, oh, it's tomorrow Thursday. Oh, that's how, like, just behind I am with life. I've been on your show. I've been, this is the third time I've been here. Uh, you've only called me on a Wednesday for the Thursday show. <laughs> yeah, thank so you. I, I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get right to it, shall we? <laughs> Now it's time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug and try and match it up to my guest. All right, and our guest this evening is Crispy Toys, Chris Yearden. How are you, Chris? Great, great. Thank you for having me. Let me uh, pop you up top here. Uh, so I was telling the boys before we went live, the mug for tonight's a little bit of a thinker. So we'll see if anyone can figure out why this mug. Now, if you're new... Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug, and I try and match it up to my guests. Now, the rum was easy. You live in upstate New York, and straight from upstate New York is colonial rum. Okay. So, that's an easy one. Teasy. You live in New York. I got New York rum. Easy peasy. <laughs> this one's a little more of a thought, a thinker. Why am I using this badass mug from the Reef in Palm Springs for you tonight? Yeah, I told you it's a thinker. All right, so I'll see if the chat knows, but so the reason you're on is because your job is put on hold due to COVID, and you've got to make money. If you don't make money, where do you end up? <laughs> Underwater. <laughs> Get it? Wow. That was a lot of thinking. I that agree. was. But such a cool mug, I had to figure out how to work it in because I love this that mug. It's a great oh, mug. I need to get the fire extinguisher because my head is on fire. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a snorkeler, and you basically drink out of her mask. Nice. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool mug? Uh, uh, Primo, what are you drinking this evening? Well, I am. Today's the first day of sober October, something I've been doing yearly as a uh, uh, tribute to something just to give myself a break. My liver, mostly, I guess. So this is just cranberry and tonic. But this does not match anything, but I did want to just show off my awesome mug of awesomeness that was from the Ohana this year. Very it nice. Happen. And it's 2020. There was just a few made, and so that's my mug. That uh, that wasn't that big of a stretch. If you can't pay your bills, you end up underwater. That's why we have Chris on tonight. He couldn't pay his bills because his job got paused. For COVID, come on! I thought that was witty and creative. It, it was. <laughs> Thank it was you, like Chris. Chris what, you <laughs> Chris, what are you uh, doing tonight? Uh, nothing too exciting. Just um, a hard Arnold Palmer out of this cool mug. Nice, like it. Very nice. All right, Chris. So Chris is on. Uh, like I said, he's a poker dealer, and I had no poker dealer <laughs> tiki mugs. That's why I had to think about it for a minute. Uh, <laughs> but during COVID, can't really deal poker because his uh, casino isn't open. So he ramped up his eBay business, which he had done in the past, uh, and he set a goal, and he smashed it, and he set a, a bigger goal, and he smashed it. And I think most people set goals, and they're like, okay, I'm going to stay at the goal. And they never kind of up their goal. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Plus, I've got great scores. Primo's got great scores, and Chris has uh, Chris blow, blows us both away. So great, great show for scores tonight. So Chris, sit back, relax, and enjoy the first part of the show. And here we go. Oops, I went the wrong way. Whoops. And now it's time for our scores of the week. These are the items that you should be on the lookout for when you're out thrifting. Dude, this is cool. It 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 it, it is. <laughs> I mean, I saw I saw it on a shelf at the thrift store, and and it was disgusting. It was just greasy. It was brown grease all over it, and I'm like, it's three dollars. I'm gonna pick that up. So I did. And uh, how long did it last? How long was it listed for before you before it sold? Uh, well, it lived in the basement floor and it had like a little mouse living in it. it um, that was for like two or three years. 
And then we bleached it and cleaned it, and, and it's stainless steel. It's okay. And then uh, maybe uh, t like two weeks, probably. Oh, nice. Wasn't very long. I mean, it might have been a little longer than that. Dude, this lamp is all, all that in a bag of chips. Nice lamp, uh, good, uh, I know Habitat, I, I've sold some lamps uh, by this guy before. I, I actually sold two lamps for $2,400 each to a designer person. And we didn't know what this one was, but it just looked nice. I kind of thought maybe it was gonna not be great because the globe is not glass, it's actually plastic. Bridget's like, nope, we're getting that. And she <laughs> did these fancy pictures. These were, that was like a new thing we did. We're like, let's show it in situ. Yeah, there are some items that you really need to put, like skateboards are way better outside on the street than in a photo studio. Same kind of right. deal. That seemed, and this was a new thing that we picked up. So. Oh, yeah, great pictures. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. Well, Bridget, well, thank you. Well done. <laughs> Bridget did those. That was just, uh, that was on the side of the road. So that was just like, I think that's it. It was just laying in a ditch? Just in, in a box, you know, like on the side, you know, it's carefully, nicely placed there. A, a nicely, um, uh, <laughs> Debbie, uh, a, a uh, nicely placed and obviously never used. And even in the pictures, there's the tiniest, teeniest chip on the, on the pourer. And we just put a little arrow on there and that thing zipped off. And it, it went to a, um, I think it went to a dealer of some sort in Florida. And he was just really happy with it. Yeah, you know, when you're, if you're, even if you're not at the top of the food chain, it doesn't, I, I'm, I'm okay with being in the middle of the line. I, I got my money. Someone else can get it even more. Cool. Good for you. That's, and, it, and it's out of my hair. It's on to the next hair to be in. And this is, uh, so these we bought, um, we bought a couple stacks of comics many millions of years ago. And there were, that was uh, Fantastic Four number one, two, three, four, five. X Men one, two, three, four, five. Avengers one, two, three, four, five. Uh, Spider Man number three I sold for. They were reader copies, very you know not great, and sold those all, made a million dollars, left them in a box, and went. It's we're fracking now, for for stuff for cheaper things in our house, and we pulled these out, and they were selling for lots of money. I'm happy about that. There you go. Easy, easy peasy. <laughs> Comic books are especially these um, Silver Age ones are great. All right. I wanted to share this. Uh, it's a cool shirt. It's Star Wars and Darth Vader and Boba Fett Hawaiian shirt. Uh, but the fact that I sold it on Bonanza. So you should definitely be using all the websites at your disposal to sell products because you never know when someone's like, I've got 45 bucks plus shipping. I will buy it off of Bonanza. Woo all right. So this was a weird one. <clears throat> Many years ago, I went uh, two years ago, I went to an estate sale that had a tiki bar. And I went back on the end of day two going into day three, because day three, everything was half off. So I showed up five minutes to close at the end of day two. I said, all right, let me have that tiki bar at half off, because he had like a grand on it or 800 on it or something. And uh, or, no, it was three, I'm sorry, it was three quarters off on day three. I'm like, give me that tiki bar. He goes, dude, I can't go three quarters on the tiki bar. I'm like, come on, I'm here. I'm now, it's cash. I go, all right, how about 400 for the bar? Because it was a really good bar. And he goes, all right. And so I walked through the house. And I was there the day before. I was there on day one. This was nowhere on day one. I don't know how it was still sitting there at the end of day two for $5. Wow. $5. Now, that was two years ago. It sat in my bathroom waiting to get pictured for two years. And then duh, the movie came out. And I'm like, oh, I should probably sell this. Was up for a day and sold for $200. <laughs> so, Yeah. Don't have People like the Disney stuff. That's yeah. Now, you are going to see this again when it comes to my shipping tip. Ah, remember the uh, guitar tab books I always talk about? Well, some customer needed both Sepultura's Arise and Chaos AD, and they happily paid $79 and $42, and I paid $5 each. $5. So that's nice. a nice, easy $10 investment. Now, if you don't know what these, is, these are, these are the guitar tabs. If you got a guitar and you want to play the songs off of these albums, this is the book you need. But these books, once the album is come and gone, the books aren't in print anymore. So if you want them, you got to come to a secondary market and pay a lot of money. And know how to play guitar. Th that too. And now it's time for... Oops, I wasn't done. <laughs> Psych, just kidding. All right, so Tiki Cat is a great Tiki bar in Kansas City, Missouri. 
it's closed. It might not come back due to COVID, unfortunately. And I was cleaning my photo studio the other day and I found a mug. I have sold a few wow. of these in the past for like a hundred, 100 and a quarter. And I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I had one. And now that they're maybe not coming back, let me let me try a premium of 200 bucks. Sold in like three days. Three days. This mug was new for like 30 bucks, I think. So at the bar, just uh, just uh, it's not a numbered, a limited edition. Just no, uh, yeah, it wasn't number, wasn't limited. But when you hear news, keep your ear to the ground. When you hear news like, "Hey, we might not be coming back," collectibles become uh, they skyrocket in value. And now it's time for our CD and cassette scores of the week. And as always, we start with flipping cassettes. All right, I got two this week because I sold a good one on, on Amazon and a good one on eBay. This is the one on eBay, Sonny Boy Williamson. He is an old-timey uh, blues artist. And I wasn't sure about blues on cassette, but I paid a dollar. It's 20 bucks later. I'm, not, I'm sure now. <laughs> I am definitely sure I'll be looking for more blues on cassette. And on Amazon, who would have thought Grease hmm. on a used cassette would sell for $25? 25 can you do you know who that per, i mean can you visualize i mean i know you don't know that person but who are they i i want to know i i don't know because <laughs> i was like this isn't uncommon and when i saw the price that i could get i'm like all right i'll try it and i got it and i'm like all right sweet all right bro sweet <laughs> and now we go from flipping cassettes to flipping cds all right, Poltergeist 2. This actually, I, I thought it was a better thing than it was, Primo. And I'm like, when I got it home, I'm like, oops, I didn't research well. I'm like, all right, I'm still going to try and make money. And I did, because I only paid like six or seven bucks for it. And uh, I said, let me try 25. I had it on sale for 20, and uh, someone took it. So I'm like, all right, I made money. But it's one of those where it took too long, and I'm like, oh, I, I don't need to buy this ever again unless something happens. It's not rock fun. songs, though, right? It's um, it's it's like a soundtrack. Oh, like yeah. a music <laughs> so here's all the people in the chat who would buy it on cassette i i i like the soundtrack too but not on yeah this this franchise is cursed for sure poltergeist yeah that could be they could be playing their car at a car show never thought of that all right speaking of cars and car shows how about some sha na na now my assistant who you met last week she's in her uh, early 40s and when she went to ship this i go uh you like sha na na she goes i never heard of them I go, what? <laughs> I go, have you seen the movie Grease, oddly enough? She goes, yeah. I go, it's the band at the sock hop? She goes, oh. So, look, sha -na -na, greatest hits, $24. So, you know, there seems to be a theme here by accident this week. All right, Primo, you got any of these CDs, I assume? Sure, of course. All right, oh, so here's the lounge. I got the fuzzy ones. Oh, here's the deal. The, the whole collection was about 20 different titles, give or take, and then there were some promos. So maybe there's 30 CDs all together. Uh, used, they're not all that expensive, but if you find them sealed, people will give you 40, 50, 60 dollars when they can get a like new one for eight bucks. But that's cellophane, so as you can see, I bought it at a record store for six bucks and I sold it for 42 dollars. Yeah, back yeah, I love Ultra on shoe. I have the whole collection, but what I did, this was in my uh, I this one was in my collection, and I realized I had some sealed ones. I'm like, screw that, I'm selling the sealed ones, I'll, I'll find them used again. That I, I'm good at finding stuff. So, all right, now it's time for. I didn't have a hundred dollar CD this week, Primo. And then yesterday, no. I'm sitting at Frankie's Tiki Bar. My phone goes cha ching, and I'm like, "Oh, sweet, Grateful Dead." Uh, just bought this at a record store in Ventura like three weeks ago. Listed it eleven days ago, and, and I paid twenty bucks, but I sold it for ninety nine dollars in about eleven days. A hell of a quick turn. Can you explain to me DVD audio in a nutshell? So DVD audio is a high-end CD that only plays on DVD players. Uh, and so when you play it on DVD players and you have a surround sound system, it envelops you in the music. Oh, so it's like 5.1 or yeah, whatever. So it's remixed to be freaking awesome. Oh, okay. Oops, 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 oops. <laughs> I, oops, I jumped ahead. Oops. Hey, wait, hold up. Don't forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, now it's time for Stacy's budget bin scores. Surprise, she has one this week. Uh, you like that? You like Stacy's little uh, <laughs> little acting job? That's <laughs> the record, though. What? 
<laughs> so Kenny Burrell, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of know him. I don't really know him. Uh, but Stace picked it out of the budget bin for a buck ninety nine, and twenty dollars later, ta da! Look, when we can get back to sourcing, take what you've learned from my classes and go. Besides, check out the regular stuff. Check out the budget bins in every record store. Uh, real quick, what's Ultra Lounge? It is the music of the 60s that you could hear in a tiki bar or a swanky lounge or in the background on Mad Men. Is that a good explanation? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. And they're broken down into categories by their CDs. Like, uh, th there'll be one, there'll be all space songs. There'll be one, there'll be all organ songs. There'll be one that are all tiki songs, ones from Hollywood movies. So that that's that's what the Ultra Lounge series is. Yeah, that's the thing I forget to explain sometimes. Like, I know it, you know it, but not everyone who's watching us knows it, so I should. It's pause. pretty specialized. It's not rock or anything. Yeah, yeah, it's very specialized. All right. <laughs> and now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. That was my money. <laughs> you said you're having cards. <laughs> I can't sell this thing. I mean, I, I don't know. It looks a little dirty. Uh, I, I mean, obviously, but I did clean it, and I think I moved the dirt around a little bit, so the so the parts that weren't dirty are now dirty. And um, but I see ones. I see this sell, uh, you know, for a lot. Um, so I did just rearrange the the words, but I, I don't know if I'll sell that. I mean, look. Uh, my buddy Lonnie sells the most disgusting, dirty, beat-up hats I've ever seen. So people do like them like this. I just, you know, for whatever reason, yours is just sitting around. Waiting. It's just sitting there. It's not, uh, it's asphalt, which I thought would be, uh, you know, it's it's not your typical Chevron oil. Right. Um, people tend to like the ortho, I, I, as researching this. They like uh, fertilizer chemicals, but they don't like asphalt. I don't know. All right. <laughs> All right, now I teased this earlier, which cassette sold for more. I always show my music duds, too, because, you know, look, things happen. Not every music thing I buy is a winner. Most are. But I had to share this because I sold ACDC for six sixty six. Come on. How fun, is, how fun is that? That's, that's, the only, nice. that's the only way you can have fun with pricing. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you sold it, maybe, too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now, this is my other dud. I sourced this from the Riviera Casino when it was going out of business and being demolished. And I thought, wow, the Riviera count team coverall. So the guys in the money room count money. I thought everyone would love this. And I priced it at $200. And that was like four years ago. And someone offered me $35. And I think they're in Spain. And I'm like, yes, yes, I'll take it. But then they also bought uh, four patches. Uh, and I have like hundreds of these patches. I also got those, but I bought hundreds for 10 bucks and I've sold a bunch already. So he also bought these four patches for 21 bucks. So it was a good sale. And he said, do you have anything else? I'd be your customer. And I think I have some things rolling around. So when I find them, I will absolutely uh, hit him up directly. And now, and now it's time for where in the world did our stuff go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. Ooh, however are you going to pronounce this foreign city? Well, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to, when I sent you this, I, I thought it was London, England. It's not. It's London, Canada, Ontario. <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> but no, it, I didn't. Re I thought it. I had always thought it went to London, England. Oh, so it wasn't Debbie? It was you? <laughs> well, I did send it to her, and I said Canada. But it could have been confusing because it was Ontario, Canada. But it that's only five five hundred miles away from me. So I that's gave funny. free shipping to send it to K uh, Kentucky, and then they sent it to Canada. It was yeah, so I had to go this way to go this way. <laughs> yeah, and I did free shipping. Uh, it, you know, and offer the GSP uh, global shipping program. And uh, because obviously it only cost me $7 to ship it to uh, Kentucky. And I think that helps sell them. All right. So that is London, Canada. However, mine truly was in the UK, a little town. Well, not a little town called Canic. Canic. It's kind of halfway between London and Liverpool. But I wanted to show this record. This artist's name is Sophie Tucker. This was from Record Store Day this past Saturday. Because look at the cover. It's paint by number. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Awesome. Yeah. So a modern record cover. I mean, a record that came out last Saturday 
decided to do their art as a paint by number. So I just really want to share that for that specific reason. Cause I thought, how cool is that? Yeah, that's neat. How cool is that? All right. Hey, uh, Primo, did you see the other day when, uh, you know, I was, And now it's time for You Have Got to Be Shipping Me. What to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. <laughs> so close. Oh, I used to have that mask. I, I used to have that mask. I love that mask. That's Fang Face. They sell it now through Trick or Treat Studio. Again. So this is your shipping tip that Debbie, Debbie created for you. Oh, nice. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so my... Uh, my shipping tip is very fundamental and I don't think it's a surprise to anybody, but I, I just want to impress people with my shipping technique. So I don't have the ribbons actually put that on our list. We need some of those ribbons, <laughs> um, but I like to just make it nice. And I like to make it, um, you know, with the right padding I use the thin foam, which is expensive to purchase, but it, you, you can ship hundreds and hundreds of items and it really protects your stuff. And I, don't use used, uh, I'll use used stuff to fill in the gaps maybe, but I just want, I just like to use new fresh materials and make sure that the shipping experience is good. And I also put that, I think on several occasions, the good shipping job has made up for, uh, you know, somebody having a problem. Uh, and they just thought I did a good job. So they were like, yeah, you shipped it so nicely. I guess I'll forgive you for whatever. <laughs> and, and that could happen. All right, you remember this snow globe? Well, look at the little dog in the lower right. His ears stick out a little bit. And I was like, okay, I've really got to protect this. And so I made a quick little how-to video because I use pool noodles in a different way. And I teased this earlier, Primo. In this film, in this little quick video, is the sexiest video I have ever shot in my life. You ready? Okay, so here is the, uh, let me take this off real quick. So what I did was I carved out the sender. Hold on, let me pause this real quick. I'm gonna get off the shipping tips here so we can see it better. There we go. I carved out the center of these uh, pool noodles like this. And so I could actually get them around the breakable parts a little easier. So it wasn't tight on the breakable parts. And then uh, I used the blue tape because the blue tape comes off very nice just to hold all the specific pieces into place that are covering the things that could break <laughs> into, like the little doggy's ears. And then okay. with the help of Kelly, we cellophane it. Uh, so it's kind of one solid piece before we bubble wrap it. This way the the, uh, the pool noodles don't move at all uh, when we're wrapping it. So you got to have your cellophane. That is a, a must use tool. And then um, good bubble wrap, kind of like Primo was saying, you got to have good bubble wrap. And so I, we went all the way around a few times and then kind of taped it off at the top. And of course, there's nothing on the bottom as of yet. So we got the top done. And then I took two sections of bubble. I kind of folded it in half and then placed it around the bottom. So now we have this perfect uh, cube that fits in the box. And now here's the sexiest video <laughs> ever created. There you oh, go. Oh, if you're a shipping nerd like me, oh, this is just gosh. like more play right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to go. Oh, when I shot this and showed Kelly, she was like, oh, my God. Because here's how much of a shipping nerd I am. Watching the peanuts fall to the left side and find their way into the dark crevices. I'm like, yes. Oh, yes. It's running. I love this video. <laughs> so if you need this video for your phone, message me, and I will send you the clip of the slow-mo peanuts falling from the sky. So I need... It almost sounded like he said something else, but yes, I need the peanuts <laughs> falling from the sky. And by the way, the Lazy Susan... That's genius. Oh, but what you. if you use, what if you use the motorized one? Then you would you wouldn't even need two hands. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The motorized <laughs> one's kind of small though. That's a big oh, okay. one, so we can work on big pieces, and that like way that. Uh, it's easier idea. to do that work. All right. I hope you enjoyed my sexy time there. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, where are we here? Not creepy at all. Not about and now it's time for the thrifty tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're outsourcing. Primo and company. <laughs> I love Debbie's graphics. <laughs> Wait, so what did I say? Yes, that's what I said. 
um, basically, I, I mean, the, again, pretty rudimentary tips. I just think it's uh, it's the way I've done things my whole life and got all my cool stuff was be first, have a bunch of money. I mean, be prepared to do what you have to do um, and be ready to move at a moment's notice so that you can take your money and go give it to the person and get your thing. And, um, and also staying on top of your area. So if you're sourcing in your home area, I mean, I used to, I don't do this because of COVID and, and just because I've, uh, I've changed my habits a little bit, but I used to be like at the, at this thrift store, then this thrift store, then this thrift, every single day. And I was just on it. And so that's a, however, that means I was on it. Uh, Ellen, yeah. you must not like shipping. If you didn't think that was sexy, you must not I like know. shipping. Jesus. Christ. That was damn sexy. All right. <laughs> <It> was. <laughs> Here is carts of Halloween stuff behind this security gate. But I'm tall and I can reach. And I grab something because what are they going to do? Just say put it back. I mean, I'm one of their best customers. They're not going to throw me out. But I was able to pull out this Don Post werewolf mask. Oh, nice. So don't ask for permission. Here's my tip. Don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you got to. Yeah. And I looked at the one I couldn't reach because if there was something, as you can see, it's a smidge open. And I know all the managers pretty well. If they would have caught me back there, they would have been like, come on, dude. That's all they would have done. So, you know. You know better. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, don't, don't be, a, don't walk in the back room and, you know, start eating someone's lunch. But if you can reach something, you know. I knocked this pumpkin off the top shelf uh, in the back room of a thrift shop last year. I was like, nice. I, I just, it just, I have it now. How much is it? And now it's time for our online selling tips of the week. It doesn't matter if you're selling on Etsy, Depop, Macari, Poshmark, or eBay. These are little tips and tricks to help you when you're selling. <laughs> so what's your tip here? <laughs> what, what am I saying? Oh, well, what am I saying there? Yeah, yeah. great feedback. Wow, our items arrive so nicely packed. <laughs> well, that's what I, I, if you were to go look at my eBay page, you would see a lot of people saying they were super impressed with my packing. And that makes me feel like an accomplished human being. Um, and I'm not sure exactly, I'm not exactly sure what this is referring to, but I, I do know that um, I always leave feedback right away. I sell it and I leave feedback immediately and then um, never usually don't get feedback in return. But if I do, it's always glowing, usually about the packaging. Yep, I, I, I fully agree. The, the customer's done their job, they paid you, leave them feedback. Okay, I got to read something because this is not how to do customer service, okay? This is horrible. Oops, all right, let me get that off here. Okay, so they messaged me. I bought, I'm the buyer in this situation, Primo. Sorry about the delay in shipping. It's been an eventful week. Could you please send me your mailing address so I can send the Tiki Bowl to you? I'm like, mailing address? Like, I bought it on eBay. Of course that matter. I said, you have my address. As soon as I pay, you have it, please. Uh, plus... I should say plus. Plus, eBay doesn't allow contact info to be sent through messages. So when you go to print the label, you'll see my address or click on the order details and it will be there. And the next message I get, like two minutes later, I've refunded your money, unable to get your address. So I wrote, what? <laughs> you can't buy on eBay without having an address on file. So you saying you don't see it is false. eBay wouldn't allow that. And what terrible customer service to just refund my money. The worst I've had in a long time. So she says, I apologize for the customer service issues. I reached out to you. I followed the process. However, your address was not provided. When given the opportunity, you did not provide your address. Not to contradict you, I provided stellar customer service. How was this stellar? It was another ST word, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> she then said, I'm positive you only you will give the only most negative feedback as that is unfortunate. Uh, wishing you all the best. I decided throughout this ordeal I'm going to keep the ball. Maybe it's been the right place all along. My thought is she decided after she sold it, she didn't want to sell it. Or so, sold it for more. Okay. So instead of being honest, she gave me some malarkey. And I sent her a screenshot because I went into, I clicked order details on this transaction. I sent her the screenshot. I go, you see my address? 
I bought seven things last week on eBay. I've been on eBay for 20 years. Of course, my address is there. That is terrible customer service. If you have to refund for whatever reason, just be honest. This is horrible. I am absolutely leaving a negative. I haven't left a negative in a long time. But to say that my address wasn't there and just refund me. She didn't reach out to eBay for help. She just refunded, canceled it. I don't think you can refund somebody unless you, without seeing the address, when you actually click the refund button. I know. It, it's all just, it, she lied. She lied. Yeah. So, you know, don't do that. that that's not, it's not going to get you anywhere. And you're going to have angry customers who are going to talk about it on their YouTube shows. That's what's going to happen. And then things like this happen. And now it's time for Unseasonably Sold. What did you sell out of season? Oh, whoops. I had this ready to go. Look, my address is there. She can see the same thing. This is the order details. My address is right there. I covered it up, but it's right there. Okay, look, it was still September when we prepped the show. So uh, Christmas things qualified. Now starting next week, we can't do Christmas no more because we're in the season. <laughs> but you didn't sell this last week. You sold this in the summertime. Yeah, and this was from a, uh, I, I think the cool thing about, I mean, this sold for 350 or $75, oh. I think. And um, this was, it was $10. It was at an estate sale. It was in the basement, the dank, dirty, dark corner of the basement where there was some spiders and, you know, like nothing good over there. Except I saw the box and it said pink on it, on the, on the edge. I just saw the word pink. And I'm like, everything that's pink is good. So I went over there, and that's what was in there. It was this uh, this old wreath? And um, and boy, the guy that got this. I mean, these sold for four fifty, five hundred dollars, three seventy five. I was like, I'm in right there. I'm ten dollars to three seventy five. Pink wreath, gone. And so you saw it in the box like this first, though, like right? this, and on the. On the edge, the open this end, like on the edge of that, it actually has like a little model number, but it says pink, like in a stamp. I'm like, that's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right. Since this sold in September, I'm still going to use it. But like I said, no more Christmas stuff coming up. Uh, but I did have this listed for two Christmases. This would have been his third Christmas. At the end of September, someone said, you know what I need right now? I need a Santa snow globe. Little guy. Right. Little guy. Yeah. yeah. So. So next week, we'll have to see. I, I, if I start selling summer stuff, that's what we'll be using. Come on. You know, I just read an article, and for the first time in 35 years, records are out selling CDs almost two to one. Back in 1985, I bought a bunch of records. Iron Maiden's Live After Death, Dead Milkman's Big Lizard in My Backyard, In Excess's Listen Like Thieves, and Run DMC's King of Rock. But soon after that, it was cassettes, and then we were on to CDs. But what changed? Why are people buying so many records? Well, we're all stuck at home, and people discovered how awesome records sound, and I want you to discover how awesome it is to flip records. So sign up for my free class at FlippinVinylRecords.com and be prepared to learn. This is another Jason Thrift's web class. Nice. All right. So uh, I've been, oops, that's the wrong housekeeping. Let me fix that real quick. That is my other show. There we go. Nope, that's the wrong too. There we go. Okay. That Roxy music one is um, that disturbing? Yeah. <laughs> you got the so, sexy peanuts and you got this and I don't know how to see them out. So October 7th, uh, next Wednesday, 7 p.m. is my newest class, Flipping Vinyl Records. This is a freebie and I've got ads running all over Facebook and I've got a lot of angry responses. So I am teaching y'all the stuff that record store owners don't want you to know based on how much anger and vitriol I have gotten <laughs> online. And you know what, Primo? I had one guy yell at me. He goes, Records aren't really outselling uh, CDs. And I'm like, dude, I just read the 17 articles on USA Today, Billboard.com. Like, go yell at them. I didn't write the article. I'm just reading the news, damn it. Just reading the news. All right, so if you've not signed up yet, it is www.flippingvinylrecords.com. If you're in the chat and you've seen any of these commercials and you haven't signed up yet, why not? It's free. And I make a ton of money on flipping vinyl. So I want to show you guys 
how to do it. And tomorrow, we're going to be talking vinyl on Nadine's show, uh, Nalo's Thrift Talk. And tomorrow, so I'm not talking about anything I'm going to teach you next week, because that would be stupid. Uh, but what I am talking about is collectors. So Primo's a collector. I'm a collector. There's a reason I have 20 of the same mug, because they're all a little different. And so vinyl collectors are the same way. So tomorrow, Nay and Lola and myself are going to be talking about records from the collectors, from me, from the collector standpoint. And that's going to be the nice precursor to the class because you've got to think like a collector when you sell certain things. You can't think like a normal human. You have to think like a collector when you want to sell things. So that's tomorrow, uh, 10, oh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. And then I saw some chatter today in the thrifting board about someone who had found something to resell on the next door app. And then like 20 people said, what the hell's the next door app? So that's the perfect segue into what my mom and I will be talking about this Sunday on selling past your expiration date, being thrifty over 50. We're going to talk about the next door app, what it is, how to use it to both get rid of things and to purchase things. All right. I think that's it. I think it's time. Is it time? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. And now it's time for the Thrifty Business Special Guest of the Week. Oh, whoops. Oh, I thought I was so ready. Uh, boo. I'm up in the show. Yeah. <laughs> boo. Hey, Chris Yearden, Crispy Toys. How are you, brother? Good, good. How are you? I well, am dandy. I'm going to go back to, I thought this mug was genius. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm still sorting that. I'm still sorting it out. All right, look, I went a little deep today. I went a little deep. <laughs> All right, so Chris is on for a couple reasons, and the main reason is, right, well, let's back up a second. What? When did you get on to eBay? 1999. Dang. When did you get on, Primo? 99, August. I was on 98, and then I, I told eBay to get rid of my ID. I actually unregistered. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I was buying too many things. And then I re-registered in, uh, in in 2000. So that's my date. <laughs> um, but what were you uh, doing for a career back in the uh, 90s and early 2000s, Chris? Uh, I was a store manager for KB Toys. Now oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> it, it actually was fun. Yeah. I, I worked for, actually worked, I started in New York, moved to Arizona, continued to be a store manager there. Then I moved to Florida, was a store manager at a couple stores in Florida, and then I went back to Arizona. That whole time, I just continued to work with KB Toys as transferring me. So that was a lot of fun. Now, was it a lot of fun moving all those times? <laughs> that part, not, not necessarily, but... <laughs> and, and it was a lot of collectible. It was, it was a lot of toys going across country quite a few times. <laughs> yeah, I bet you those toys are more well-traveled than some people. <laughs> yeah, right, right. This toy, <laughs> this toy is driven 47,000 miles. <laughs> so I was already into toys, and that's kind of why I got the job. And then, you know, my collection continued to grow and grow every every shipment that we got of new toys. I bought, like, you know, quite a few, quite a bit of it. You know, working at KB Toys, Primo, it's kind of like me working at Tower Records back in the early 2000s. It's like, really? I get to run Tower Records in Hollywood? <laughs> this is, like, awesome. Right? <laughs> and KP's kept all the cool toys, the old toys, like maybe some of the newer versions, but they had everything. Sort of. Yeah. And I always thought the cool thing about them was that whenever they got something, everything was like three for five dollars or two for five dollars. And it's like it seemed like everything we ever got was always. And KB was very good about going in. What a lot of people don't realize is toy companies will get to the end of their run and they've already produced product, but no other retailer wants to put it in their stores. This happened with the Tick toys. No retailers wanted it, so KB went in and bought it all really cheap. Mm. So collectors are all over the stuff because it's never been available anywhere else, and KB Toys is selling it for, like, almost nothing because we got it so cheap. So that's why that's how I ended up scaling up my collection so much. I was going to say, how many Tick things did you have? I had the entire line of all Tick. Oh, wow. All the toys. All the toys. <laughs> Now, when did when and why did you start selling some of the toys? Did you get tired of moving them? Pretty much, yeah. yeah pretty much. <laughs> I gotta pack these toys again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what did you clear out everything, or did you, you know, did you still keep a good collection of stuff? 
No, I, I still had a good collection. You know what really, this is funny. Um, when I was in Florida, I went to a, um, we had national manager meetings and it was actually, it happened to be in Orlando the year that I was living there. So I went to the KB Toys national manager meeting and they had these, if you had sales or whatever, you got to pick from their table. And they had, there's a company called Code Red that used to do fire trucks and police cars. And they made one specifically for KB Toys. So there was this KB Toys and it was made for the manager meeting. So very limited. So I picked this, of course. So I ended up putting it on a shelf. And then I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not really into fire trucks. I put it on eBay. And it was one of those things that got a couple bids. But then I'm watching it when it's ending. And in the last five minutes, it went, I think it went from 100 to like 700 in the last five minutes. Oh, I love that. Holy and, God. And, that, and that's when I was hooked. I was like, oh, my God. this is Does everything do that? Let's, let's, let's sell more. And, and I was hooked. <laughs> you, you, you will both appreciate this. I told the story before, but this was my big mistake when it came to things like toys. Uh, eBay flew me to San Francisco to speak at an event called Power Up, where they were trying to woo their interns that were graduate. So they said, hey, can you come talk to our interns? I said, sure. I was thinking they were like freshman and college interns. No, these were all people about to get their MBAs, and they've been interned at eBay. And so eBay wined them and dined them in downtown San Francisco for a weekend, and they had this whole hotel and every ballroom. Like this ballroom was puppy petting, and this ballroom was poker playing, and this ballroom was <laughs> video game playing. And I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> and um, they were giving everybody, uh, they had made a special logo, a Lego thing just for that event. So it said, power up. And it was the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. And so they handed me one. And then I was just sitting there because I had to catch a flight later. And there were boxes. And, and it was a little thing. It wasn't big. And they said, hey, you want some more of these? We just got to schlep them back to the office. I'm like, no. Oh, oh. Geez, <laughs> it, it Little thing sells for like $300. Oh, I could have walked saying. away with a oh. box full. Oh. I would have said, do you have more boxes? <laughs> You know, this was so long ago. I just wasn't really – Lego has never been on my radar. It is nowadays yeah. because of my yeah. friends and stuff. But it wasn't then. So, to me, it didn't seem like, yes, I should try and schlep home 20 of these. It was like, <laughs> I got one. I'm good. <laughs> Crap. Crap. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, toy store manager to poker dealer. How does that – that's a hell of a – I mean, I used to size cheerleaders for the uniforms, and I'm an eBay seller. So we all, we all have extremes in our lives. <laughs> so how did you end up dealing poker? Well, I, when I was in Arizona, when I was in New York, casinos weren't really a thing yet. So, you know, I moved out to Arizona, and some of my friends played poker. So I ended up going to the casino and playing poker at the casino. And then I just met a couple dealers and just kind of liked it. And I actually got out of KB just in time because I left there maybe two years before they went bankrupt and closed all their stores. So I kind of like am glad I found the casino when I did because, you know, I would have been forced to find a new job eventually anyway. So and it, it paid off because, you know, when I got in there, I got in there um, right before Moneymaker. I have anybody that is familiar at all with poker, Jason, you probably know because of Vegas. But when Moneymaker won the World Series of Poker, it ex just exploded. Yep. And everybody said, oh my, he's a nobody. Well, as far as poker world goes anyway, anybody, or he's, an, he's a, he's just, he's an anybody like us. If, if he can do it, we can all make millions. And everybody started playing poker. And so poker room started hiring people like crazy. So I got in there just in time and, and it was, it was, it was a great job. It's still a fun job, but yeah, I've been doing it for a long time now. But but how does one get into being a poker dealer uh, uh, professionally? Like I'm guessing there's classes. Like you don't just show up and they're like, sure, you'll be a dealer. I got cards. <laughs> yeah, no, you have. To. <laughs> I got cards. <laughs> it, 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 that's funny. Um, you pretty much have a lot of people get in um, doing something else in the poker room or in the casino, and then eventually you learn it. But you have to, and it's actually the interview is actually an audition. You actually have to sit down at a table with the people that are hiring and you have to prove that you know how to you know how the game is run you know you can do all so it's more of an audition than anything else but when i got in there was actually two or three it was like three poker schools in phoenix arizona it was a thing it was, you know the schools you know how there's bartending schools yeah well, a lot of the bartending schools were also doing poker schools to catch up you know because that was the fad at the time so i went and did one of the poker schools and um and that's 
and the casino hired me straight after, you know, but, but I think I, um, I think I was in there for six weeks, I think. And then I went and auditioned and uh, got into the casino just in time. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my <laughs> <wife>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I was sad though that I didn't get to wear you know that the visor with a clear front on it. I thought that that, that was going to be you know, the little the little uh, <laughs> yeah exactly garters around your arms. <laughs> <shut them by. laughs> uh, Primo, are you a poker player at all? No, I don't like losing money. <laughs> I hate you it. Could, you but, could win. No, you I could can't. win. I don't know how. Yeah, I played the lottery once and I won a hundred dollars and I never played it again. So I'm ahead. Yeah, you I, are. I've definitely seen I've definitely seen both ends of that. I've seen people win and I've seen people lose. And so yeah. my ultimate poker story is I was playing on the strip, uh, and it was uh, uh, O'Shea's. O'Shea's was a great dumpy casino, but yep. you, you were actually almost on the strip. Like the door was open, the wall was open, and I was sitting like six inches from the sidewalk of the strip. So it was fun <laughs> to play poker and watch people walking by. But I knew it was time to go, and I knew I was too drunk when the hand's over, and no one's scooping the chips, and everyone's staring at me. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Did I win the hand? They're like, you have a straight flush. <laughs> I did. What? I do. Um, I should probably go home now. <laughs> I love if those you, If you ever get a straight flush and you don't notice, yeah, it's time to go. It's time. <laughs> did you get your chips, though? I did. I did. And then they're all mad because I just want a big hand and I left. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a huge no no. <laughs> that's a huge no no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but I, I would definitely do that and I would get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I won. Goodbye. See you later. You, you get you, your back. You can feel the, you know, the burning on your back of everybody giving you the death stare <laughs> as you walk away from the table for sure. <laughs> so let me ask you this. If you ever had uh, any anybody at the table ever like, Almost start fighting each other. Oh yeah, yep. Knife fight. Oh, oh. Yep, yep. Yeah, there was. It was. Uh, and this was. I was working uh, in Arizona, so they were. You know, they're all native casinos. So, and that's the worst because that he ended up in a native, um, the casino, the prison or the jail on the on the reservation. Wow. So, um, yeah, but that was fun. That was that was a good time. The craziest was uh, when our a table got knocked over because they came in to a, arrest somebody that had been a serial bank robbery. I think it was jewelry stores. I think somebody had been robbing jewelry stores like in Arizona, in Phoenix, for like months. And his girlfriend finally got mad and turned him in and said he always plays he always plays poker at Casino Arizona. <laughs> so, so sure enough, they waited and he was sitting there at the table and they... Uh, they they came in. There was like 20, 20 cops and just took them down. Definitely and, should be a nice bank robber or jewelry store robber. Should be nice to go. Stacy and my wife and I played uh, poker one night in the Silverton Casino, which is a great casino here in Vegas. And we weren't next to each other. We were across the table, and she played a hand really, really wrong. And so, in the process of people, you know, either you know sitting down or getting up, and the, and the dealer shuffling. I just said to her, I said, hey, if you would have done this on the river, it would have been better for you. So everyone at the table listened, and they thought she didn't know how to play poker. She just messed up one hand. <laughs> and so like two hands later, she pulls a full house, but these guys are just dropping chips left and right because they think she's some dumb chick who can't play. Right. So when she, when she crushes them with a full house, then they think we're sharking them. And the duo was about to fight me. And I'm like, dude, just because you listen to our conversation doesn't mean we're sharking you. She just messed up one hand. She's really good at this because she just took all your fucking money. Oops. <laughs> she just took all your money. And dude, dude flexed on me while we were sitting at the table. I'm like, I will beat the heck out of you right now. And the dealer was like, whoa, because you're a big dude. I'm like, so finally security told him to knock it off because he wouldn't shut up. I'm like, hey, look, you didn't have to listen to the conversation. You know? <laughs> and we really weren't yep. doing that. We weren't really trying to pull something. I just happened to say to my wife, "Hey, you know, yes, that got me so so animated. I swore because uh, we took them. It was exciting. This is an yeah. exciting show. Night, <laughs> night fights and drunken straight flushes. <laughs> you know? All right, but let's get to why we're here. So, yes. so of course, COVID screwed a lot of people's lives up, yours yep. included. Now. 
casinos are open here. Are they not open back by you yet? Um, well, New York, of course, you know, Cuomo was being very cautious about everything. And so he, we, New York was opening in stages and everything. Finally, the uh, casinos were allowed to open, was it three weeks ago? But only at 25% capacity. So needless to say, if the casinos are going to open up at only at 25%, they're not going to waste it on table games and poker. They want all those people, the few people that can come in to just play slots because that's where they're, you know, yep. they're going to make yeah. all their money. So not to mention the other restriction, What you know, it's like you have to space people out and put up uh, plastic and, you know, and like who wants to play at a – three-handed poker table with a big plastic wall around it, you know, so. <laughs> like you get a murdered in Goodfellas or something. So, not fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how rumor is we may not be back yet until next year, but don't know for sure yet. All right, so you don't want to go underwater, then what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> I ramped up the business for sure. So, and, so, uh, pre, so pre-COVID, um, how much were you selling kind of on average? Like, were you doing like 100 items a month, 50 items a month while you're, while you're working as a full-time dealer? Yes. Um, sorry, I should have had that sheet out. So no, I uh, I had 100 and uh, about 150 listings at the most whenever, you know, when uh, before the whole COVID thing happened. And I currently have 540, I think, or something like that. But when, you know, I was doing, I was, I was under, so my 90 day total was maybe like 8,000 or something. And so my goal was, okay, well, you know, I want to get, uh, let's try to get up to at least 200 listings and $10,000 in 90 days. And that didn't take very long. You know, the March totals were just pretty, pretty good. You know, I, I was basically waking up and driving all the way to my couch every morning and, and just <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> sitting there and listing. I, I have a lot. Of, I had already had a lot of stuff. A, as you know, I just started, you know, toys and because I wasn't going out and sourcing, obviously. So I was just going through and listing a lot of the stuff that I've just been sitting around. Um, my basement was pretty much full of stuff. And so I reached that 10,000 and then I was like, all right, well, next one is going to be 12,000. And, you know, at this point, I'm probably up to maybe about 300 listings. And, uh, you know, I just kept, I just, every time I got to that goal, I, you know, I upped it by like 50 or 100 and said, this is the next goal. And I actually have my calendar here that oh, I, I think it's a pull a pie chart, Primo. Okay. And then, <laughs> you know, I'll just be like this calendar here. I would write down everything I'm listing every day and like how much the sales were. And, you know, like I can tell you, like, actually, I think I have them all written down on here. So in March, see if I wrote it down. Yeah, March I did a I listed was able to list 110 things in March. And that was all in the last week of March. Oh the geez, that was, that was a busy week. You know, I wasn't I wasn't laid off until March 16th. So you'll see right away on March 18th I listed seven things. And then um so I, by the end of the month I had listed 110 things in just the last week and a half, I think. Yeah. Um so then in April I listed 247 things and my sales were up you know, I sold over a hundred. And then I listed uh, over 150 in May. So I just continued listing and I you know, 100, sold almost 200 things in May. And it just continued to go from there. Um, June was good. June, I listed almost 250 things. Um, but yeah, so that, you know, and now my next goal is uh, I finally hit, uh, what did I just hit? What did I just hit? 18, I think. Is that is that what I... 18,000 18, yeah. in 90 days. Yeah. yeah, I just hit 18,000 for my 90 day total. So I said, now, you know, I'm really shooting for 20,000 now. I think with Q4, I can do it. And, and of course, obviously, I'm as, as long as I get five things listed every day, I'm happy with that. But, you know, I'd like to do more than that. But my goal every day is to get at least five things done before I go on to anything else. Primo, do you know what your 90 day total is? 90 days. Not that much, I'll tell you that right now. Um, I uh, I don't know how to get there. How do I get there? Um, yeah. I would think that's probably somewhere around um, eight, maybe okay. eight or nine. It's not ten. I know that right now. Um, but I I'm not I'm not I'm not very disciplined in listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and that, well, well and, and maybe Chris will rub off on you because he did, you know, he set that goal, that first goal, 
and then boom, smashed it. Now, I think a lot of people set a goal and they're like, okay, I'll just see if I can keep breaking the same goal. No, set a new goal and go higher. I've been trying to get to 25 for 90, and I, I keep just hovering around 24. That's where I'm going. Yeah. Oh, oops. Where'd my thing go? Just well, I like how you said you listed oh. in May or June, you listed uh, 150 things, but you sold 200. That's, I like that. Yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's what Jennifer's yeah. saying. Do you know what your conversion rate was? What, was was with that many listings <clears throat> yeah I'm, I'm selling um like right now my 90 day total is 528 active and 425 sold nice so yeah so i got a decent amount of uh you know sales in there also i want to point out something because people you know when, when, when you have a tv show when you have a youtube show people go follow your stuff so my numbers look n ridiculous you ready so here i'll make i'll make me the big so everyone can see it Okay, my active is 7,202 and my unsold is 9,478. Now, that's not real. What happens <laughs> is I use a service that duplicates my listing on six foreign U eBay sites. So every one listing ends up being seven listings. Oh, wow. So when it sells, I have six unsold. So right now I have 1,000 listings, but I see. Okay. Add six more sites. That's seven thousand. Some people go, "Yeah, your 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 figures aren't good." I'm like, well, yeah, "They are really, but you don't understand what you're seeing." So I, I explain it every once in a while, so people realize, "Yeah, I have a thousand. My ninety day to sold on eBay was five hundred, but I sell a ton on Amazon." So, but that's that's the thing. You've got to set a goal, Primo. You've got to set a goal. I yeah. know. I my know. goal is just to be have a pile of money on my desk and do nothing. Is that yeah. not a goal? You can do some Scrooge McDuck stuff and just dive into the money. <laughs> That's what I want. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let me see. We had some other questions here for Chris, and they, they got away from me. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I don't have a private pile. I have a pandemic Armageddon pile. <laughs> Can we watch Flippin' Vinyl if we are registered? Yes. If you can't show up live next Wednesday, just sign up. You, you'll get the link to rewatch. But if you show up live, I do answer questions. Let's see. Becky said pre-COVID, I was at 2,900 listings on eBay. Tomorrow, I'm going to hit 4,500 goals to get oh, to 5,000 wow. by year end. And that's Not legit 5,000. My 7,000 is BS. Mine's really only 1,000. So Becky's a legit 5,000. And I can't wait, Beck. Uh, and then Stephanie said, "Were you chained to your computer 110 in a week? <laughs> That's a lot of work. That, that, that was a crazy week for sure. But you know, a lot of my stuff is um, very easy once I get the first one done. Like, for example, you know, I buy a Hot Wheels collection, so I list one, and then to do the next one, you pretty much only have to change a couple words and change the picture, you know, because they're all the same weight, you know, the same everything else. So, you know, I can oh, yeah. if I'm doing the same exact type of thing." It really doesn't take long to list a bunch of them. All right. So I think what we're going to do, because uh, I, I see everyone putting how many items they got. All right. So it's October 1. I'm going to go post in the thrifting board tonight. What's your goal for the end of this month? Now, your goal can be anything. You can say, I want to sell $3,000. I want to list 500 items. I want to lose 10 pounds. I don't care what it is. But let's do a goal post. A goal post. <laughs> nice. Let's do a goal post in the thrifting board tonight. And think about what your goal is, and then we'll revisit it like uh, right after the election train wreck is over. So like November okay. 4th or so, 5th, whatever, uh, because we'll all be so consumed the first few days of November. Yeah, we'll need a little time to. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but think about what you want to do. Make it obtainable, but don't make it easy. Like a goal shouldn't be ridiculous. I'm going to list 77,000 things in the next three months. Well, that's not going to happen. But don't say, like I'm I have 53 list. pieces. I have 53 things up right now. So, all right. You, I can you, I'll just I'll lift 50 more. I want 100. All right. There it that's is. My, that's my yeah. Thing. Yeah. It's not easy, but, but it is obtainable. So, make your goal obtainable. So, when you do hit it, you feel good. But then, as soon as you hit it, like Chris did, make another one right away, but a bigger one. Even if it's, even if it's by like, so, so Primo says, I want to have 100. If you hit it, say, okay, next month, I want to be at 100 and two <laughs> but something just to keep going up don't be like okay it'll always be 100 no 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 yeah. keep pushing keep pushing and that's why i didn't immediately say well i want to get 400 things listed i just kind of upped it slowly so i wouldn't get devastated if i didn't get there by the end of the month all right so chris uh primo has some great pictures so let's add those to our stream uh this is 
pre cleanup. <laughs> yep. So yep. was this so was this how your office looked when you were dealing and you would just come home and do a couple things here yes. and there? Yes, exactly. Yep. Yep. Not too bad. Like I've seen them way worse. Well, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Like, like my photo thing had to be on a box to get it to the right height. So, so I didn't have to bend over. It was just a like a table in there that it was all Primo, sitting on. Primo, look at that castle gray skull right there. Mm -hmm. I, see it. <laughs> I know, right? That's nice. Oh, where did everything go? It was like a magic trick. Hold on, let me bring that back up. <laughs> and ta-da! Where did it all go? <laughs> so yeah, so we built these shelves, and obviously now this was built at a level so that I, I figured out when I, you know, you saw another picture where I had that box in there. I made this so that that's perfectly so that I could just put the photo thing on there and it's already at the right height. Basically those were standing. And then that desk over there was more of like a sitting desk to sit and do it, you know, with my computer over there and notice my record and cassette stereo over on the left there. I see it there. <laughs> now, are you handy enough that you build these all yourself? I no, I wish I was that handy. No. Okay. Phew. I feel better. <laughs> Cuz I am not that handy either. No, I have to I wish my neighbor over and go, "Can you help me with something?" <laughs> I, I wish I, I we broke a mannequin here and I cannot figure out how to fix it properly. <laughs> so I'm going to have to uh swallow my man pride and walk over this weekend cuz I need the mannequin. I go, "Can you tell me how a person who can fix things would fix this?" Cuz I cannot figure the it parts. out. I don't know what to do with the parts. <laughs> Woo! Look at that. Nice. And that's a new, yeah. I, and and we did those shelves in the middle there, you know, specifically so I could use those for boxes and organize a little bit better. And yeah, it came out nice. Yeah, it's kind of like my shelves that. right there. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. using it for shipping at the old office. I got a really big thing over there, so now this is just kind of stuff I'm working on directly on my desk. Steph Stephanie likes your setup. That's a sweet. Thank setup. you. And this is uh, in about four weeks. I'm moving into a shed. A 12 foot by 24 foot shed is getting delivered. So, oh, if you live in upstate New York, will it have heat? Yes, we're um, <laughs> we're, insulate, we're insulating it and running electricity to it for heating, and so yeah, it'll it'll it's going to be what I'll be working out of. So it has to <laughs> it better it better be good enough for me. And since so I didn't have a lot of room in the basement, those racks there. That's that's the inventory that I have listed in those boxes. So, so uh, Bash Class says, yeah. Jason, have your teenager look at it. They can fix anything. She broke it. <laughs> so her and I try to fix it. I I try to try to be a man. Try to fix it. Now now her dad has to fix it. <laughs> hey, your daughter broke this. Can you fix this, please? <laughs> hey, I like your numbered system. Very good. Yeah, and and you know, obviously, I used a custom oh, skew to tell me what boxes stuffs in when I sell it and. And that was because, you know, when I had the 150, I would sell something and it would take me an hour to find where it was because I didn't have a system. So once I started growing, this was, I didn't do this probably until April. And at that, you know, I was like, I need something. I can't spend an hour looking for stuff that to, when it sells to ship it out. So, and this really worked well. So, uh, very organized. Primo, if we looked at your shipping area, would it be this organized? Well, this is my, sh everything is all the same. So, <laughs> so if you can see over here in, in the, it, like right there, in the way background, that's the stuff I have for, that's, that's stuff that's for sale, it's coming up, we're cleaning it, it's been sold, it's waiting to, whatever. I'm a loser. So flip, flip it and frozen once in Oak Park, uh, New York you're in. Um, Central, Syracuse. Not and you're very not, close to the Canadian border. And you're not too far, Primo. Where are you at? I'm in Burlington, Vermont. Yeah, it's not. About eight hours to Syracuse. I've yeah. gone on some buying trips out there. All right. So why are you moving to the shed? Uh what 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 was was precipitating the move out of the, the space you just built? Well, I probably should have showed you pictures of my new death pile because <laughs> it now consists of the garage, the basement, and the family room. And it's just I get, I get like, it now. Right now, it's everywhere around me. Um, yeah, see, he got a shed. I bought a whole house for all my stuff, so I understand. I fully <laughs> understand. I'm sitting in the master yeah. bedroom of a house right now. <laughs> so, so that was the only. And a big part of it was that um, I purchased a gigantic estate, and uh, it's a whole truck full of toys. 
and that 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 pretty much took up a lot of the space. And that was because I, I rolled the money basically. Uh, you know, I I was selling stuff that I had in the house, and you know, I was hitting all my numbers and everything, and and I wasn't going anywhere because you couldn't go anywhere. So PayPal had, you know, more money than I had ever had in my PayPal account, and I saw this collection come up and. It wasn't for sale, but I called him and said, would you be willing to sell it? And well, he's, well, I was going to sell it myself, but what would you, and so we came up on agreement and I drove to Pennsylvania and brought it home in a big truck. So, And that's another good lesson. Don't let do. deals go by. If you've got to rent a truck, if you, it, I had a friend who was having a hard time, a little bit of money, but the things that he had that he could get were so good. I'm like, you need to find a partner near you. That's going to get part of your profit, but they're going to bankroll it because yeah. you know how to sell and you know that deal is good. You shouldn't pass up a deal because you don't have the money. Now, I, I mean, look, if you're broke and it's a $100,000 deal, that's a little bit different. But if it's a couple hundred dollars and you're going to then get in profit $1,000, $2,000, get that truck, find that buddy you can do it with because you shouldn't pass up a deal just because you're a little short on something. If you don't have the truck, you rent it. Chris ran it. He went and got it. Yeah, this was it was the biggest thing I've ever done. Um, I've never put, spent that much money on one thing to you know make it completely flip. You know, and uh, you know, in fact, one of my best friends is like, "You're not going back to work." He's like you're not spending that much, you, <laughs> because you're not spending that much money on one truck full of toys if you ever plan on going back to work. <laughs> so that was going to be my next question: Are you going back to work when you can? Well, you are. Uh, as of right now, yes, I would. Um, but, you know, because I don't feel like my numbers are still where I want them to be to not go back. So, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of caught, but yeah. In, ca in case anybody from the casino is watching, yes, I'm going back. <laughs> but you've ramped up. So when yeah. you do go back, you're going to have a nice cushion of a lot of things listed. Yeah. And you've gotten to that point where if you still got stuff and now you've got the shed, and that's, now's the time to hire somebody. Uh, like five seconds ago, the teenager just said uh, she was supposed to take pictures tonight. She goes, I have to take my sister to this and that. Can I work tomorrow night? Sure. Get someone in there to help you. Because when you're back at work, if you can come home on, the, you know, on your days off and have all the pictures done. Yeah. And then so in your show last week really like really hit hit me because that's the point where I'm getting, you know, I'm, I, I can only do this so far on my own. I'm kind of getting to the point where, you know, how much further can I go? I need somebody for sure. And I've been talking to a couple different people to, you know, possibly come in and work, do some stuff for me. So yeah, yeah that's, I, that's the I, next step. I asked my own kid to help, but he is zero help. He just <laughs> lays under the desk and you are, you are no help, buddy. Oh. Yeah, this, yeah. This guy doesn't either. <laughs> Give me the dog. <laughs> 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 it's pet hour here on Thrifty Business. Oh, oh there we go. There we go. Pet for everyone. So, th so this guy, this guy rode on my dash all the way across country. Oh, <laughs> eighteen years old. Eighteen. Wow. Wow. 18. What a good kitty. Okay, here you go. <laughs> look, look, this one's trying to fall asleep in my arms. He's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to touch on this before we get to your scores and duds and call it a day. Uh, you've been using Facebook Marketplace and doing yeah. the shipping on it, which is kind of relatively new. <clears throat> Most of us haven't experienced that yet. So uh, how does it work? Is it easy? And do you recommend it? Um, I I really like it. I, I, I guess some people are having a problem with it, but I found no problem whatsoever with it. Um, I sold, I've sold 27 things. Which isn't a lot, but I, you know, I, I listed for the first time three weeks ago. I think was the first time I ever listed anything on there, and and those of those 27, 24 of them were in three days. It was 24 in three days, because they had a big. And the reason why I did it, they had a big sale three weeks ago. They did a free shipping weekend, so anybody that bought on Facebook Marketplace, it was shipped for free. So the, the buyer didn't have to pay shipping and I didn't pay the, you know, it was basically eBay, eBay covered the shipping. So the, so anybody not selling on Facebook marketplace that weekend was crazy to not sell because that buyers were buying, buyers were, well, a lot of people didn't know about it. I mean, they didn't really promote it very well. I, I don't even know what anybody's talking about now. I'm like, totally 
So, have, Primo, have you not sold on Facebook Marketplace in the past? Yes, and I've shipped stuff too, but I shipped right. Like, shipped so now, stuff. now, so here's the deal. I can finally talk about this because I've known about this for two years. Because I got a buddy who works uh, 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 at PayPal, and he said, "Hey, he goes heads up. We're working with Facebook, and they want to crush everyone. They don't need any money." And so they're going to build this marketplace where the fees are going to be. Uh, he said none at the beginning. He said we might not ever have fees. Uh, and then doing that free shipping is trying to get people into using their marketplace. He goes, yeah, they don't need the money, but they just want to own everything. They want to own yeah. the market on selling used goods. And so I'm like, cool, I'll be there. I'll, I'll be there. I'll be on as many avenues as I can to sell as many goods as I can. So I but did five hundred and seventy-seven dollars in sales, and I get all of that money. None of no fees. No fees. No fees. That's amazing. What are you saying, so Primo? It is pay. So it's it's through PayPal, and I have seen ads lately saying PayPal's new marketplace. I didn't realize that it was in conjunction with Facebook or anything. Yeah. Okay, got to look. Yeah, at that. it's very weird. The people who have moved to manage payments, I haven't yet, luckily, but I will be there eventually. Um, they're like, yeah, I'm just getting rid of my PayPal now. I'm like. I use PayPal all the time for yeah. buying things for 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 you know someone seeing something on a, a YouTube haul show and, and can I buy it just yeah PayPal me the money I'm like why would you get rid of your PayPal like just that's a tool to have like there's no reason to get rid of it just keep it because there's plenty of places to sell that you it's so easy to go yeah just PayPal me that money or Venmo of course yeah so, yeah you should again you should have PayPal you should have Venmo. Uh, what's what's it? What's the one the kids use? Zell is that one? Well, however you get the money in my wallet, it's like, See, okay, we're all all like wait, what is it? I heard the <laughs> youngsters talk about Zell or some crap like that. All right. No. So, so speaking of managed payments, real quick, um, yeah. a lot of people were complaining about you know, and now I've been on it now for only three weeks, but I had a huge problem at the beginning because I tried to set it up with my credit union. It needs to go through a real bank. I was having a lot of problems. I wasn't getting my money. I switched it over to my Chase account, and I get a deposit now every single day. And I've had no problems whatsoever since I switched it over to Chase Bank. So I think a lot of people saying that it takes them forever to get their money. And, and I, I love managed payments now. I have no, I like the fact that you know your, your fees at the end of the month are very small now because they're pretty much taking the fees out and then giving you the money. You know, So you owe very little at the end of the month just for whatever FedEx and a couple other things. But um, I love managed payments, and I like getting a deposit. So it's not every day. It's um, because they only do it Monday through Friday that they. So it's basically Tuesday through Saturday. I'm getting something deposited in my account every day. It's nice. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm only not in it. I'm only not in it, and I'm bummed because I can't. People ask me questions. I'm like, I'm not in. I can't answer, and I can't teach about it. But they haven't figured out how to work it with the service I use that puts them all the all the foreign websites. And so that's why I'm not in and they're not bugging me because they're still working it out. Because yeah. if that wasn't the issue, I would have jumped in when they were like, here's 50 bucks, jump in. Oh, you're giving me money to jump in? I would have done it then, but I can't. That's when I did it. It, <laughs> it, was, yeah. it, it yeah. would screw up part of my business. And that's what you. That's another good tip. If there's going to be something that's going to screw up your business, but eventually will get fixed, don't jump. Wait till, I mean, I don't, I don't want to lose. I do a lot of international sales because of the service I use, like 20% some months. I'm like, I don't want to yeah. lose that. No way. All right, let's look at your duds and your scores. We'll get out of here because you got you got extras of each. So uh, <laughs> this, you know, old, old school thermals usually do well. Why, why is this not doing well? That is a great question. I have had this thing, what, for since 2018? I mean, it is, and I've lowered it as low as, because I put the stuff on, I, in fact, right now, I think it's 40% off. So I think it's down to like seven dollars or six dollars right now, and it's it's been on sale so many times it's not even funny. But um, yeah, I don't know what's well, I don't know why it hasn't sold yet. Same thing here. Look, they're only six sixty for two pairs, and and it's funny I I bought I mean I bought these really cheap. And there was a store going out of business, but and I thought the first set sold, but this set's just been sitting here forever. I don't know. The problem is you're not making it six six six. That's yeah. I'm gonna try that. There you go. See, someone's like, "Ooh, Satan dockers." I'm gonna get them. Dicky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, so here, everybody, you know, is all about sports cards, and you know, and 
So I finally went to a Target and saw, you know, some new sports cards sitting there. I was like, oh, I'll try the new Topps Fire. And so, yeah, so I paid, I think they were $9.99 at the store. And uh, I was lucky to sell one. And the rest, I ended up just opening them because <laughs> they just sat and sat. <laughs> so, right, yeah, so right. I, I did not get lucky with baseball cards. Now let's get to the scores because this is where the fun is. Yeah. Mighty Mouse. That that was a really nice statue. And this is part of – oh, yeah, this is one of the numbered ones. So this is part of that giant tall that I was talking about that came from uh, Pennsylvania. Um, and, you know, that got a good portion of my money back right there from that one thing. Basically, I am now – the one that's about to sell that I told you about that I just put up for auction yesterday – once that sells, I'll have all my money back, and everything that's left here is all pure profit. So, and and, yeah. and I've still got more than half of the collection to go through. So, and, and that's why I said you've got to find the money, you've got to rent the truck because of the deals there. Because now Chris is going to be at the point where when that last thing, the next thing sells, boom, the rest is profit, and you still got half. Yeah, like you know, I've been talking about that big CD collection I got, two thousand four hundred one CDs. I've only sold forty eight CDs, and I've got all my money back. I bought two thousand four hundred one. I sold forty eight, and I'm back uh, now. I'm into profit. That's yeah. Great. So you got to make it happen. You got to. All right. I don't know what the heck this is. I never <laughs> heard of it. Why? That that is they're DVDs. It's a, a apparently it was a series. Um, I think it was on the end of like is it early 90s or late 90s um but i bought them for six dollars each or five dollars each at a local thrift store oh, cool. and and you know i've heard you know that to look for box sets i think you're the you know one of the people that says look for you know dvd box sets you know and so i looked these up i was like wow one of these was actually broken um the somehow the plastic inside fell apart but uh yeah apparently this is a really hard to find series and it's a popular show, apparently. It's so hard to find people. I ain't never even heard of it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't exist. That's why I'm trying to think who was in it. So somebody's got to know in the chat. There's a really popular actor that was in this in this series. I mean, look, I'm yeah. usually the guy that's up on pop culture, and t even if I don't watch TV shows or watch movies or listen to singers, I know them. I know all about it because that's just me. And I'm just like, when I was when I was getting the show ready, I'm like, what is this show? Is this I don't another album by Ftronic. Is this a, <laughs> I think one of the bald ones was in it. Um, uh, Jennifer wants to know if you do estate sales, Chris, or maybe um, you for sure. Yes, I do go to estate sales. Um, not so many lately because I have so much stuff here already. But uh, but yes, I used to get a lot. Oh, Lou Diamond Phillips was in it too. Yep. But especially in Arizona, I absolutely the estate sales in Arizona just killed it all the time, and which is odd because a lot of people, you know, it's like most people move to Arizona. So you would think they would have gotten rid of their stuff before they get there, but I would find really good stuff there. All right, chat. I think you guys are confusing young guns with young riders. Cause you're all saying the cast of young guns, which is a movie. This is a TV <laughs> show. I don't was think Diamond, Diamond Phillips wasn't in this. No, I don't think so. I think that's young guns. Stephen yeah. Baldwin and Josh Brolin. There, there we go. go. That's who's in that's this. It. Now that's young it. guns, great movies. I love them. Yeah. I was shocked about those. This little tiny Batman sold for what the little Batman? How'd yeah, know? and this was part of that same that same toy haul. Um, and there was probably I think there was about twenty five figures from this line of Batman animated, which was hard for me to sell because these are ones that I had back when I worked at toy store and I sold them and and I did never knew that this combat belt Batman for some reason two hundred bucks for this one figure. No idea why. But uh, yeah, but who, but who cares, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't care why. I just got it, and it didn't take very long to sell either. I sold in less than a week. All right, I know Robotech. Uh, at least know that. These were a, ma a local uh, state and um, thrift. Uh, yeah, thrift store. A thrift store in Albany. I went to visit some family, and there's a really cool thrift store there that sells everything. It's a it's a church store. It's only open like Wednesdays and Saturdays, so and they sell everything so cheap. Book, books there were twelve for a dollar, so I think I paid. So this must I think this was like a dollar forty or something like that that I paid for those total, and got a hundred dollars for them. It's nice. 
Well done. Thank you. Yeah. All right. now, now you're taking me back to my youth. Ooh, monster trucks. Bigfoot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's nice. So I got this at a, a local auction. Uh, they do. They started doing Facebook Live auctions during the pandemic. So I was buying, you know, because they couldn't have local or live auctions. So I start watching them ever, all the time. And they had a, this hall, um, this lot come up that was all vintage posters. I got some Sports Illustrated posters from the 70s, like a Larry Bird poster, you know, um, Dr. J, a bunch of like really nice sports posters mm -hmm. from the 70s and 80s. And this one was still rolled up. I mean, this, this actually, that picture, I stole that from the internet so that I could show what the poster actually looked like. I, that, that was so that I could see show what it looked like, because actually the poster itself was still rolled up. Never, it was never, and I want people to be able to see the poster. Yeah, that's All it. right. So when you do skinny things like a roll up poster, take it so it goes corner to corner so it fills the whole thing. You've got, oh, this, yeah. you know, and, and take it square. You know, you, you'll see a lot of your table, but if you go corner to corner, it fills the square very nicely. When you're doing baseball bats, golf clubs, rolled up posters, all those things, right? Um, yeah. Uh, 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 you had a question. Oh, how'd you arrive at the Batman price? Um, I, I saw that I, what I did with a lot of this stuff was I go to the high end. If I see that somebody just sold one for, you know, 189 or 199, I'm all like, I can get that. I, I like my pictures. I think I create good listings. I've heard people say, you know, if, you see two just sold and one sold for 70 and one sold for 100 you should go for 80 no i go to the high end every time you know and and that's what i did with that batman i saw that one had actually i don't think any had sold for like a year maybe and that was the other reason that there weren't any on there currently mm -hmm. but i saw that the last one sold for almost 200 so i was like well i'm gonna go that high then so that's what i did now, Primo, I want in on this one it's not his biggest sale that he shared but it's awesome it's yeah. like 12 pens I mean, and I used to love those. I used to collect them when I was a kid. Just you know, collect them. I, I, I'm a I, shocking. That's shocking, right there. So apparently, it's those those white accountant pens. Uh -huh. Those are the ones that apparently people Super collect. Point. I remember those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And That's I got those at a local auction also. So uh, someone was asking if you do buy it now or auction. It looks like your scores were all buy it now or best offer. I'm guessing maybe. Yes, I I very very seldom do auction. Um, I have an auction up right now because um, three different people on Instagram, I put it on Instagram to find out what it was. It's from that toy hall. Ended up being a uh, prototype, a Disney statue that Disney used at conventions to try to get people interested in Oswald the Rabbit. So oh I, my so, God, that's awesome. So I had an $800 offer on Instagram and a $600 offer and a $500 offer all on Instagram. When I posted it, asking what it was, so I, that's when I decided. Well, I'm just so I threw it up on there for seven hundred, and it got seven hundred dollar bid within the first half hour of it being listed. So it's currently sitting at seven hundred with nine more days to go because I started it yesterday for ten days. So get ready for the run up at the end. And that's the one that's gonna. And somebody t emailed me overnight or messaged me through face eBay and asked me if I would end it and how much I wanted for it to end it right now and let them buy it. And I said, well, you know, I've already had offers on Instagram and I've promised all those people that I would auction it. I can't, it's not fair to them. And go yeah, ahead and bid. I, I, you know, we always recommend in the thrifting board to let things run. Be, and I've only ever seen it once not go past the offer they got. Only one time in all the years running Facebook groups, it came in way under. Now yep. I watched, uh, I, I happened to stumble across another guy who sell, who flipped CDs. I didn't, didn't know him before. So I'm like, all right, I'll watch him. Is he good? Is he good as me? Uh, and so he had some great sales. He had like a $500 CD sale in the last week, but he tried an auction and his only got to $31. And I went and looked at the other solds of the same CD. The one before his that wasn't an auction sold for 72. And so that auction, now what you're auctioning is super rare. Yeah. He had a rare CD, but a rare CD that like 10 people have listed right now. It's rare, but 10 people had it listed. So he gambled, and he ended up losing forty dollars on that gamble. That sucks. And and that's why I don't do auctions anymore. Everything's if I think I can get a lot for it, I'll just put a huge high buy it now and let them, let you know, offer me something. Time. Yeah. Uh, do you know how many walkers do you have right now, Chris? Um, it was five, I think, last time I checked on it, but yeah, it just got listed like less than twenty-four hours ago. Stephanie just left to go look at your listing. 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, Oswald. Well, there's not very many, but it's Oswald vinyl statue. All right, so uh, uh, it's going to skew his numbers, but go find it and put it on your watch list, and let's all enjoy Chris's bounty in nine days and two hours or whatever it is. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that is our show. I want, like I said, uh, I'm going to get up a post either tonight or first thing in the morning. It is our goals for October. And look, when we revisit them in a month, right after the election, if you didn't make your goal, don't shy away and not say it because that's all part of the learning process. If you didn't make your goal, come back to the post, and the new post, did you make your goal? And say yes or no. And if it's no, we're not going to be like, you suck. We're going to be like, okay. Why didn't Why? you? And, and how can we as a group help you make your goal for the next month? Because it's a good month to make a, a really obtainable but hard goal because we're going into Christmas, kids. This is the People one, are going to be buying nutty stuff like Oswald vinyls for a million dollars. So, you know, that's what's happening. And um, I finished out September $200 short of last December, and I had a kick ass last December. So my September was insane. So I expect my December to be crazy. So I'm going to be listening a lot too. So please participate. It, you know, the things we do on this show and in, in my group, the Thrifty Board and the Secret Beach, are all meant to help you grow as a seller. And so, like I said, if you if you fall short, we don't admonish. We don't say you suck. We say here's a shoulder to cry on, or let me pick you back up, and we'll just figure it out. So, uh, and so I want Primo. I want you to set a goal. I, was I, I know I, we're buddies, but I know you. I need you to set a goal. <laughs> I know you. I know you. I know you're kind. <laughs> uh, yes, it was a great show. I've had a great co-host, great guest. So do me and them a favor. Give us a big old thumbs up. <clears throat> and if you're new. Please subscribe, click that bell. You'll know when we'll be on again. And it will not be this channel, but tomorrow, uh, go, whoops, let me get the subscribe out of the way. Go find Nalo's Thrift Talk. That's my friend Nadine. We are going to be talking records from the collector standpoint. Uh, and that's important. If you're going to sell anything that is a collectible and you're not a collector, you need to know what's going on up here because the three of us are nuts. <laughs> We're very nuts. But our nut, our nuttiness means you can make money if you've got the right product. And that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow on Nalo's Thrift Talk. So please tune in. Uh, and then Sunday, Mom and I will be back with the Next Door app. If you've never used it, let's talk about it. All right, Primo, thank you. Let's do this again. Let's dance again, brother. Right on. Thank you. I like your new camera. Uh, Chris, good luck. I cannot wait to see thank how you. your thing ends up. Nice to meet you. Uh, but also yeah, good you luck too, Primo. with getting back to your career. But you, I think you. you're going to be awesome. When that career opens back up and you've got this dialed in and you're looking for an assistant, I think you're going to get the best of both worlds. Yeah, I'm hoping, yeah. Revenue yeah. streams. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's the goal. Thank you, everyone, very, very much for uh, tuning in tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow on Nalo Thrift Talk and Sunday back here with me and Mom. Have a wonderful night, everybody. Good night. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>